yo ho ho and a bottle of okay it's just coffee <laughs> I'm John Zadar, and this is February 16th. It is Wednesday. You're watching On Top and Hot. And yo, listen up, folks. I am moving. Penny Boys was my home to be hatched, but I'm being pushed out of the nest now. They're giving me my own place. I'm over there at Stocks wizard come on over all you got to do is put that in the search bar of google stocks wizard i haven't got a lot going on right now youtube doesn't give me my analytics or subscribers so you got to follow me please folks i feel naked over here these feathers are not enough to keep me warm in this nest by myself so come on stocks wizard i'm waiting for you so what do I do here on this show? Well, I go out and I look at OTC stocks and penny stocks during the day while we're doing everything. And I try to find stocks that got something going for them, something interesting, something hidden, potential, profit, whatever. I want to share it with you. And I got three for you today. They didn't all turn out the way I thought they would, but they're all interesting nonetheless. And one of them, one of them is special. I think you can make some good money on it. It's number two. All right, so let's jump into this and see what I got for you. First stock we're taking a look at is Hedevy. At least that's how I pronounce it. H-D-V-Y is the ticker. And we're doing our initial due diligence on the otcmarkets.com website because it's the only site that's updated daily. It's always current. Why go searching for outdated information? Come here, get it right the first time and save yourself the time and headache. So we are looking at HDVY, Health Discovery Core. They finished today at 0 0.0492, just under a nickel. They are at currently 38% gains. They're on the pink tier, they're current, they got a transfer agent verified, but I don't see a verified profile. I do like to see that. Now I've not seen consequences for not having it up there, but still I like to see it. Now they tell us that she is a shell risk. That means that they are supposed to be reporting revenues, but they're not. Let's just take a quick glance at their financials. That goes back to 2020. If we hit the quarterly, no, September of last year, June, March, nothing. So truth is they're making no money right now and they're supposed to be. Interesting. So what does this company do? Well, we've got no information here. I don't know why they didn't put anything here. It would certainly help. Now this company is, complicated. They've got some AI Brainiac stuff, this SVM that they have created, which is better than neural networks. Now, I'm going to just give you a heads up here just so you get a feel for what this company is. Our principal asset is our intellectual property, which includes advanced mathematical algorithms called SVM, as well as biomarkers that we've discovered by applying our SVM techniques to complex genetic and proteomic data. Biomarkers are biological indicators or genetic expression signatures of certain disease states. Our intellectual property is protected by 21 patents. They've got this different type of AI brain that is able to analyze data and see it in different ways. And they're making discoveries with it. Now they've got a website there's a lot of information here. I don't dare touch it all. I found one paragraph, which is pretty meaty, but it gives you a full expression of what we're kind of looking at here. And it matters because this company had no news today. There's nothing that I could find outside of one piece of information. And then you have to extrapolate the value of that information. And I'll put it all together for you. So this one paragraph pretty much boils down what this company is about. The support vector machine, that's the SVM we just read about in their disclosure. That was their 10Q we read that from, is established as one of the leading approaches to pattern recognition and machine learning worldwide. In addition to their application in molecular diagnostics, SVMs are replacing neural networks and other methodologies in a variety of fields, including engineering, information retrieval, and bioinformatics. They have received widespread notice for their ability to discover hidden relationships in data sets and have exploited for numerous applications. Now, you ready for this? Don't get bored here. Listen to what it can do. This is actually a little scary to me, including image analysis, text and image classification, handwriting and speech recognition, fingerprint identification, face recognition, 
fraud detection, financial securities prediction, protein structure prediction, medical diagnosis and prognosis, classification of microarray gene expression data, hold on now, hold on, identifying consumer purchasing patterns, weather prediction decryption, vehicle control monitoring, prediction of traffic variables. I mean, come on, it's getting into every aspect of life. And they say this thing is finding new ways of solving problems, but they are really focused in on the medical. And I think that may be what this is really all about. Now let's jump back to OTC markets. Now, being that there was no news today, and I did find one piece of information, Twitter did talk about it, but it's really not out there a lot. However, it is all there is right now. What sort of relative volume did it create? Well, we got a small wave there, small. That's about what, 300% added on, 1.1 million to 4.3 million. So there was a lot of extra volume today. What is our share structure? We got about 364 million shares in the float. Not a great float, but it isn't going to kill us. We've already seen the financials, and I'm just going to jump over here and show you. As I said, there is no news. So the only piece of information we have is a disclosure, believe it or not, right here. A couple days ago, this is the 16th, this came out on the 14th, an SC13G. What that is, is a Schedule 13. A Schedule 13G is like a 13D, they're both basically the same thing. If any investor owns more than 5% of the company, they have to file one of these. So we get to see anybody who owns more than 5% of the company. This is it here, and this is what it looks like. Now I've just highlighted a couple points so you can see. Name of the reporting person, the person that's gonna own more than 5%. Citadel Securities, the big hedge fund, right? Citadel Securities LLC. And if we come down one more time, the person behind these operations, Kenneth Griffin. He owns 22 million shares of the stock. Kenneth Griffin, you don't know Kenneth Griffin. Let me share with you who Kenneth Griffin is. This is Kenneth Griffin. Kenneth Griffin is the CEO of the huge hedge fund, Citadel. He is also a billionaire. He is worth $16 billion right now, folks. $16 billion, and this guy owns 5% of this company, which is under a nickel under a nickel. Come on, folks. This is so small of a company, it really isn't worth his time unless, unless there is something huge and big, like Bill Gates was getting into the CRISPR, more gene technology. This is what they've got here. They've got technology that is breaking down DNA genetics and actually finding biomarkers for diseases, which obviously Kenneth here thinks is a huge deal. That's my presumption. It's all inference at this point, except that chart. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what sort of flux it had today and if it looks like it could have some more. Remember, this is a little company with an average float with a very big man standing in the midst of it. So we're over here at TOS, that's Think or Swim. Do you need a trading platform? You can get this one for free. Just go over to TD Ameritrade, sign up. You don't have to give them any money. Just keep your account open and you can use Think or Swim just like I am. It does so much. If you're not using a trading platform, I don't know how you're trading. So this is actually not a bad chart. I mean, it's, it's kind of ended bad over here, but we had some humongous jumps going here. You can see they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it breaks through that 200, which it was on an incline on. Very volatile, but it was climbing in a very unusual manner until it broke through the 200. And it scratched and clawed to stay up there, but could not do it. And I can't tell you what this is about. That is a serious drop. Look at all the volume here. But I have no clue. There's no news. Now I probably could go do a Google search if I was really interested. In either case, she hit a low bubble here, got off of that a wee bit, and has just been planing sideways. Now the 50 came down and is 
laying on top of the price right now and we're a long ways from that 200 and our 200 haul is just starting to even think about coming up however the MACD for over a month almost two months has been climbing to the signal line and is now there and is now finally gotten over that is a good sign same with the RSI the RSI has been climbing very slowly and here recently has picked up a lot of extra thrust and is now in the overbought zone which is where I want to see it if you want growth let's come down to that 20 day one hour view oh that looks pretty now you can see she is laying flat on that 50 a little bit of wiggle but not much at all she's kind of waiting if you will for that 200 she doesn't want to go up in value and price so she's sitting here waiting for the 200 to come down and meet her and look what happens she takes off again now that could be coincidence we got a lot of coincidences here not only does the 200 come down and hit right here at the price zone we have a low bubble hit at the same time and two days ago is when this schedule 13 G came out and we found out that Kenneth was invested in this company so everything happened on the same day right there boom I mean I don't know if they planned it or if it just happened but that's the definition of coincidence lots of things happening at once and it took off now it's not a huge jump but you don't get stocks moving quickly until they get above that 200 and look at that MACD does that show strength look at that RSI we're still in the flames on the 100 let's come down to the five day five minute looking good so the two days yesterday she was climbing slowly today she was climbing faster she started way back here at uh, that looks to be just under three cents and she was just under five cents here so you know about 66 percent gains in two days now we've got the price going up we got the MACD coming down we have a divergence here so we need to watch this there could be a drop but I think that everybody recognizes the fact that somebody of affluence somebody with money somebody who normally would never take a look at an OTC stock or a stock at five cents is not only looking at this stock but is already invested and has over five percent shares we don't know the reason but you know there has to be a reason so is this gonna fall folks I don't know with this sort of speculation it's very tough to tell how investors are going to perceive this however in saying all of that if he's in you may want to do more DD do some Google searches go to their website read up on it see if it impresses you and then see if you feel confident following Kenneth maybe he knows something that can put money in your pocket next stock in the batter's box is SFWJ <sighs> and the crowd loves them this is software effective solutions finish the day smack dab on a nickel with 132 percent gains and that with no news or catalyst she's on the pink tier current has her verified profile and a transfer agent so she looks good over there and she's a self-proclaimed shell company that means she's not making any money she doesn't have any business at least not until just recently but in saying that that is not why the stock ran not in my opinion and I'll get to that in a minute so what does this company do well this pretty much says everything I can really say about the company software effective solutions doing business as MedCanna Inc is a holding company focused on acquiring and developing companies in the cannabis and CBD oil sectors our goal is to create global leaders in producing processing and distributing cannabis and CBD products and that's really all it is however none of this really is in my opinion why the stock is running today and I'll show you why I think it's running and how I think you can make more money on it again and again so obviously there had to be some volume around this I mean with that sort of increase well yeah but I mean it's not like what you think is it you got about 14,000 shares being traded daily and today well she got about 33,000 more I mean that's about 300 percent more but still it's only 56,000 shares moved today and it's at 132 percent and we're not talking triple zero one going to triple zero three no we're talking about a full bloody nickel so a little bit of volume got this thing moving now why do you think that is 
Could it be because of a low float? It could be 30 million. So we got low volume, low float. It's not a super low float, but obviously the chemistry must be right to be getting those sort of bounces. Now you still think it's all about the news. All right. There is no financials. There are no disclosures. So let's just jump over to the news and see. Now we've got two pieces of news. One we're not going to look at because it's from 2007. The other one is the most current. It came out about a week ago, February 7th. This is Software Effective Solutions Corporation announces acquisition of Medcana Inc. and appoints Jose Grebio Diaz as new Chief Operating Officer and Director. Now, the one thing you need to know about this company, it was off the market. It was on the expert market prior to August, September of last year. That's when they came back into the game and they too were looking for a reverse merger. We're looking for a deal. Ta-da! This was it. Software Effective Solution Corporation announces the acquisition of Medcana Inc. and appoints Joe Gabriel Diaz as the new Chief Operating Officer and Director. Software Effective Solutions Inc. announces the acquisition of Medcana Inc. and positions the company to become a leader in the Colombian cannabis and CBD oil sector. Medcan Inc. is located in Colombia in Antigua Valley, Medellin. Well known for their perfect location at 6,900 feet, rich soil combined with long days, they can actually get four harvests a year. Did you know that you can grow marijuana from a seed to a full adult and take it down in three months? That's how fast hemp family grows. The company's goal is to produce pharmaceutical grade cannabis extracts worldwide while developing companies in Latin America with an initial focus in Colombia and partnerships with laboratories, research facilities, and hospitals throughout the world. Now that's great news. Company comes out of the expert market, gets current, gets a deal, and it just happened last week. So even though it's great, that is not the mathematics that I see making this thing run. This is all good, but it's all about the technicals on the chart that you're going to be able to cash in on, as far as I can tell, more than once. You didn't miss this one. This was just another one of them. Let me show you. So this is the infamous six month, four hour chart for SFWJ. <laughs> Actually, this is a wonderful chart. This is great. Now this right here, this jump, from triple zero three to 10 cents. It's huge, right? Darn right, it's huge, 33,000%. It's actually more than 33,000%. Now that was when it was on the expert market. We're gonna zoom in there. This low was on the expert market. This day is when it came back to being pink limited. Now you can see the dark black is the market hours between 9.30 and four, the gray is aftermarket. There was no sales during the day, but it jumped from triple zero three up to a penny and a half before it even got back on the market. So a lot of gains had been lost right there. But when it got on the market, it started down here at uh, just about a penny and went to 10 cents. So you're talking about a thousand percent jump in one day. Now, that is not the only jump. It was a big jump, but it's not the only jump. I want you to notice this. I'm going to draw a line across the bottom here, right? That is the low bubble. And you can see there's lots of tags down here. Now keep this in mind, folk. Every one of these squares represents four hours. So this square right here, it came all the way down to here, right there. And then four hours later, it was back up. How far did that drop? This particular one fell to one penny and it jumped all the way back up here four hours later to 4.8 cents. That's 480% gains in four hours, right? You have them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's at least 15 of them there in the last five months. And there's probably more there that I'm just not paying attention to. So if I grab the high here and you see the low, if I grab the center, just trying to eyeball this, right? I'm not even looking at the bars. I'm just looking at the spread here and I'm trying to find the center and it looks to be about right there. Maybe a little higher, maybe a little bit higher. That becomes the point of profit right there, folks. Anything that falls deep below this bar is worthy of buying. Matter of fact, I would say 
right about here, right there. That price is at 3.4 cents, 0 0.034. Anything that falls below that would be worth buying because as soon as it jumps up, you're gonna get your money back. This fell here all the way down in four hours, right? Every single bar constitutes four hours. So when this fell all the way down here, it fell to under a penny and then jumped all the way back up. Now, even if it jumped back just to the lowest part, it was up 300%. If it went from this low just up to the next low, each one of these is hundreds of percent, hundreds of percent jumps. So anytime it gets below 3.4 cents, I would buy it because it's almost an imminent return on your investment. You can see how this happens over and over again. Now I'm going to come in on the 20 day, one hour, so you can get a look here. So she's going straight here. She hits a low, right? Right there. She hits a low down by a penny and boom. Now we're in one hour. In one hour, it is up to four cents. So that's a 400% gain in one hour. It hit a low, went up. Now it's gone sideways for a few days, hit a high, everything likes to pull back off the high, this thing overreacts because of its float. And look, boom, it fell, bouncing off of a high. You may want to monitor the high bubbles on this. People overreact, it falls down low, right down here, right? Right down here at uh, under a penny, under a penny, and one hour later, it's back up. One hour later, it's back up to five, over five cents. 530% gains in one hour. Do you see the bounces on this thing? It is just bloody ridiculous. So I like this stock, not because of the news, not because of the catalyst, not because of the management. I, I, I don't even know about this new cannabis company. I don't know about Columbia. None of that matters. What I like is that they've got a 30 million float, which seems to be stuck in a channel here that is making money over and over again. Now this is in the nickel. That's right there to nickel. This would be beautiful if it would fall down here and get into a channel. But it's been stuck here for five months. You can see it's solid. It is solid. It has a pattern. The volume is pretty much the same all the time. It hasn't had any extra volume to act any differently. This is all predictable. And when it does get big volume, it looks like it's on the negative side of the coin than the positive. So watch this when it hits a high bubble, then it probably going to hit a low bubble. And when it hits that low bubble or at least an extreme low below three and a half cents, I personally would jump on it and ride it back up in one hour to four hours, get your money and get out and wait for the next bounce. And the last stock we're taking a look at is IDVV, International Endeavors Core. Finished today at a real low price, 0 0.0087. And speaking of real low, she finished the day at just over 1% gains. It wasn't like that. There was some strong activity today. There was uh, news out that people have been reacting to. She's on the pink tier, current, has a verified profile and a transfer agent. So she looks good. Now, this is another one of those companies that was on the expert market. It was back in January of last year, something happened and they got caveat emptor and got yanked off the market. And it was back then they were talking about CBD infused beverages. And then a few months later, they're talking about Biden talking about clean energy, which is the first time they brought up clean energy. And now they are actually focused on clean energy. So they got back on the market in December current and they just made a deal here and then they put news on top of that. So we've got a lot of catalysts going on here and she was climbing yesterday and today, but obviously some profit takers came around and took away all the air out of the balloon and it came back down. But the news talks of more catalysts, so it's still worthy of checking this out. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, not bad actually. She went from 2 million to 24 million roughly. That's 12 times her normal volume. And we're saying 12 times millions, not 12 times thousands. What is the share structure in this company? Eh, we got an average share count, 161, 162 million. Not a bad share structure to work with. What are their financials? They were doing 22,000. We got to take three zeros there, put those behind the numbers. Back in 2020, if we look at the quarterly, 
September of last year's quarter, they were only doing $15,000. So the news that came out in January and February that we're gonna look at is important news because it definitely tells that they're making more money than that now. All right, there are financials disclosures. I don't think they have anything going on over here. No, not since 2017. And their financials are all caught up. That's how you get current. So let's go take a look at that news. So it was all the way back here in 2019, they were talking about those CBD infused beverages. But then it was here in 2020, November, they're talking about Biden, talking about clean energy companies. So obviously they've had a change of opinion of what they're gonna be doing. Then we see here in November or January of 2021, they got yanked. That's when they got pulled off the market. And then it was the next piece of news, December, just past us here they're back on the market they get some social media links up so they can get back in touch with their investors it's been quiet for a long time and then they have two pieces of news and both of them go hand in hand now the first one is on january 24th international endeavors corporation better known as iec has acquired full control of universal voltage a privately operated clean energy company now, Universal Voltage has a presence in commercial and residential business. Solar, power backup, EV to G, that is electric vehicle to grid, bi-directional charging sectors with distributorships and partnerships in a variety of products. Now, they have sales set up for Q1 right now, and they say that they're going to be making $150,000 plus. And the next piece of news says it's definitely plus. In order not to complicate things, they don't want to jump into this newsletter and tell us about their new product, so it is in the next one. Now, this one came out February 16th, so that's today. So they tell us that they had announced as part of its date of the company address that it had entered into the clean energy crypto marketplace. This is a whole nother sector now. IDVV has been developing several solutions that it's bringing to market in the coming weeks. More catalysts. Integrating mining capabilities into the technologies we've recently acquired from Universal Voltage. We're going to provide clean mining solutions for both residential and commercial users. We have a vision at IDVV to provide a new and existing customer with solar battery backup setups with the option of selling electricity back to the grid or mining cryptocurrencies, whichever is more beneficial to the user. Pretty interesting. You use what you need, sell it back to the electric company or hey, let's just use that and try to get some crypto which will get even more money. Nice concept. The company is also developing an off-grid power solution that will allow for any surplus of energy generated from its solar technology to be used for mining crypto, creating an opportunity for people using off-grid power to be able to generate revenue similar or better than selling back to the grid, thus improving your return on your investment. Now we are anticipating doing well over a million dollars in the first quarter, as we originally thought we were gonna be doing 150. So there has been a huge jump and we're going from $15,000 to 150,000 now to no, over a million. So that's a huge increase. Our website will be starting to show updates throughout the week and we'll have several updates throughout the month. So we've got more updates coming through the week and the month. Catalyst, catalyst, catalyst. We've received several requests to verify there will be no reverse split. I'm putting it on the record. The company has no plans to do a reverse split in the foreseeable future. Though we are evaluating doing a potential buyback. Oh, that would be nice. That's when they buy shares and make the float smaller. I like that. The company is in negotiations to acquire several technologies related to our clean energy, crypto solutions, and solar business. Come on, folks. We've got all sorts of pending catalysts here. Presuming that he's telling us the facts and he's telling them to us straight. So, I see lots of new revenue, I see new acquisitions, I see new updates on the website, I see new PRs coming. What we haven't seen is the chart. Let's go take a look at that now. 
So we're looking at IDVV six month, four hour chart. And boy, oh boy, look at the volume spike today. Look at that volume spike compared to everything else. Dwarfed it. Oh my God goodness. Now, we had a huge jump here and I cannot tell you why. Don't have a clue because this is in September and there was no news from January to December. There just wasn't anything going on there. So, I don't know what this is about. It was huge. It really took it up. Went up to about five cents, just over five cents and right now we are at under a penny. She was up above the 200 as it was took off on whatever catapulted her. Now you got to remember, this is during the time when she was off the market. So I'm not quite sure how she was trading like this off the market. Then here, this seems to be about the time she came back on the market, that big jump right there. But that's all there was. And then it fell. Had a nice climb up and then a long fall down until today. And today, that's a pretty big jump. Let's come in on the 20 day, one hour and get a better view of that. So she's got a lot of rolls, doesn't she? You, you can see right there, that's about her ceiling where, where she keeps coming up, hitting, just going over, coming back. From down. And again, we got a channel about, mm, well, you can see actually, actually, if we look at that, that's not a channel on the bottom. That is going uphill. That is going uphill. So what we're looking for here is for this price to get pinched between this continuing line going up and that, that resistance there where it keeps hitting its head. And that should push it up. Now it's riding on it right now. It has gone above that line and is now hitting its head on the 200. And hopefully this acts as a support now and not a resistance and this is going to bounce back off of that though i got to say that 10 is pretty strong pushing down right now the macd is forcing down everything is on a down pressure so i might consider that this was going to come back down into this channel zone let's come down to the five day five minute all right she was riding in that channel a little low hit a low bubble here fought to get right back into that channel <laughs> and yesterday afternoon, as I said, she started growing. You can see down here, the MACD took a turn, came across the signal line and was really pushing hard, as was the RSI. Got into the overbought here for a good portion of the morning, which is where I originally looked at it. So once she got above this support, she took off. I mean, you can see these aren't indiscriminate lines. I drew this line way over there. I wasn't focused in on this. So, you know, you say, well, that does it really matter? You'd be amazed. When you see a price keep hitting the same place, algorithms give more attention to it. And you say, but what's that got to do with investors? It's not, well, it all works together because we're all looking at the same lines. We're all looking at the same signals. Imagine if we all had different signals in the traffic. You know, everybody had a different green and a different red light. As it is, we all look at the same one, so we all move at the same time and stop at the same time. And by using the same lines, the same tools, the same settings, the same SMAs, I see the same signals they do. So this bounced right off of that support. And look, after a huge day, it came right back down to that support. So this one was not drawn for today's purpose. It was drawn just as a regular channel where the price seems to be wanting to stick around. And it is. So hopefully it has pushed its way out of this lower channel up into a higher channel and now we'll start bouncing up here. This obviously becomes its new high. It had a high over here somewhere and we're look. oh I didn't get my line there. We're hoping that this bounces off of that and comes up and the way things look I wouldn't depend on that. Now that's not to say it couldn't come a little bit deeper down here to the 200 SMA, bounce off of that 200 and turn back up and hook. Now the whole point here is that today's rush we may have missed, but he's got a lot of things in the oven cooking. We just need to wait for the bell to go off and then get in line again. Remember, doing DD is important. Check the news early in the morning. Don't wait to the middle of the day. Keep your news channel open so that you can see news as it's coming in. The early bird catches the worm. You know, I was thinking about it. All three of these stocks have one thing in common, following. 
We're following the first stock because uh, Kenneth Griffin got into it. A big man with a lot of money is in, well, a neighborhood he's not normally in. Where is he going? Everybody's interested, so we're following him. The second stock, we're following that bounce. We are following that down under three and a half cents. You might even be able to go up to four and a half cents if you're willing to 20 and 50% gains, right? So we're following the bounce. And the last one, we're following the catalyst. There was a list of catalysts there. I'm not going through it again. So you got three stocks there you just need to follow to get to the cash. Folks, DD, it could be a lot of fun. You can find a theme if you want, or you can just find a catalyst. Whatever you find, it's yours because you found it. DD rewards the DDers. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you.